Good morning. So, last week we did Matthew 7, 17 through 23. And for my I will statement, um, as you can read here, I will. I was, I was saying that God is telling me to obey him this week by putting these studies on YouTube. So <clears throat> that way other people can go to the link and learn how to study the Bible in this way. And um, that would be exciting to expand it to more people. So I think this is going to be really good for us. And Joanne is here. And what was your I will statement from last week? Uh, from last week, mm -hmm. scripture, on the I will, I wrote that every prayer I pray, I should be trusting the Lord that it is done. And it is done in his way and in his time. That was my I will. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's great. And so how did it go? I thank God for the wonderful week which I had because I have also learned that uh, it starts in the thoughts that yeah. when I'm thinking, the thoughts that are of good fruit, mm -hmm. the results are also good. So it starts with the thoughts, that's what I've noted. So in my thoughts, it is good for me to be thinking about the things of the Lord, the Word of God, so that the trust in the Lord can also manifest in the physical. Mm. Yes. So it starts from the thoughts, the words that I speak, then the action. Mm. In the end, that's when the trusting also manifests. So you had a good week? It was a good week because <laughs> I am learning mm. that trusting it starts with the thoughts. If I'm thinking the good things, mm. the outcome, which is the fruit, is also good. Mm. So it is a process that is happening in my life. Mm. That's great. Mm. And then for me, I was able to get this study on YouTube. That's good. So I created my own account and... I had my son, he put it up on YouTube, and it was amazing mm -hmm. that we were able to do this. Mm -hmm. so, so I'm excited about mm -hmm. this. Mm -hmm. And actually, I think that this could expand to more and more people around the world yes. as they see the value of disciple making. We're going to really see a lot of good things happening. So let's go to the next passage for today. And before that, mm -hmm. Bob, I just also wanted to add that um, the other thing that also has happened to me is that mm -hmm. um, when the bad thoughts are coming, there is that thing that I now know that this thought is not of God. So straight away when the thought is coming, then the word of God is also coming, which mm. is helping me a lot. That when the bad thought is coming, the same time the Holy Spirit is bringing what is acceptable in my thoughts. Mm. So it is also good that this is happening because straight away the bad thought is taken out, then the, then the Holy Spirit is bringing what I'm supposed to be meditating upon wow yeah so it is a process and the lord is teaching me and i know that teaching it is a process you start and you go through the process and mm -hmm. by the end of the day what the lord has prepared for us it is manifesting oh, that's wonderful um, and see that's what jesus did um, when he was tempted he met the devil with scripture mm -hmm. so the Holy Spirit can give you 
the good thoughts and the scripture to chase away those evil thoughts. And that way, you don't rely on your strength, yes. but you rely on God's strength mm. and His Word. That's true. Because in our strength, nothing can happen. I've tried so many times, oh, yes. and my strength gets weaker and weaker, and then finally, I just collapse. <laughs> so, you know, if, if we use God's Word, yes. then the devil will flee from us. So that's very good, very good. All right, let's take a piece of paper out and we can start. And what we do is we, we draw a line across the top and then we make three columns. And you don't even have to do it this way, but it's, it's easy for us to understand so that we can have a record of what we did. So the first column you can put the scripture and that passage is Matthew 19. One through six. So I just write it in the top right here. And then we read the passage in different versions. So, let me see. Oh, we have a good, we have a Bible right here. Good. So let's turn to Matthew 19, 1 through 6. But first, let's pray and ask the Holy Spirit to speak through us. Speak to us. Lord Jesus, we ask that you would help us right now as we read your word in this passage, Matthew 19, 1 through 6. Help all of us and those from around the world who are joining us in this study of your word. We ask that you would open our minds and speak to us, Holy Spirit, and show us what you want us to obey from this passage as we read it several times and then we write it out and then we try to recite it from our memory. Bring to our mind all the things you want us to understand and focus on as we look at this passage to discover what your will is for our lives. We ask this in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Okay, you wanna read first? Yes. Matthew chapter number 19, verse one to six. Christ teaching on divorce. Now it came to pass when Jesus had finished these sayings, that he departed from Galilee and came to the region of Judea beyond the Jordan. And great multitudes followed him, and he healed them there. The Pharisees also came to him, testing him, and saying to him, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife for just any reason? And he answered and said to them, have you not read that he who made them at the beginning made them male and female and say, For this reason a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So then they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together let no man separate. Mm, very good. Now I'll read it in this version, the English Standard Version. Now when Jesus had finished these sayings, he went away from Galilee and entered the region of Judea beyond the Jordan. And large crowds followed him, and he healed them there. And Pharisees came up to him and tested him by asking, 
Is it lawful to divorce one's wife for any cause? He answered, Have you not read that he who created them from the beginning made them male and female, and said, Therefore a man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let no man separate. Hmm. Very good. Now if you have several translations, go ahead and read them. If you have even more translations, that way you'll be able to hear it several more times. But now what we're going to do is we're going to write it out. And we're going to write it in the first column right here. Verses 1 through 6. So take about 5 to 10 minutes to write it out. And you can do it right now with me. Right while you're, you're listening.
I'm almost done. I'm on the last verse. Okay. How far are you? I'm about to go in the last verse. Okay. So we'll give you another minute. Okay, so now that we have written it out, we would like to recite it so that we can remember it even better. So first we read it and we all listened to each other and then we're writing it down and while we're writing, I know your mind is thinking about something. And then also now that you have written it, we can try to recite it from memory so that we can remember these, these words from God. So, let's try to remember this. So, I'll go first. So, it sounds like Jesus was somewhere where the Pharisees were listening to him. And they wanted to ask him a question. And so their questions always trying to trap Jesus and make him stumble in something. So they picked out this really good question. Um, is, it, is it lawful for um, a person to um, divorce his wife? And, and so Jesus, he says, well, you know, you have heard from the beginning that whatever God has joined together, let no man separate, because the two people have now become one flesh. And so, yeah, it makes a big difference now that somebody who, who is married, who is trying to think of a way to to get rid of his wife for some uh, reason, for any cause, they're asking him this. And so that he's telling them the two have become one flesh. So what God has joined together, let nobody separate. And that's all I can remember. Okay, do you want to try it? Yes. <laughs> uh, as Bob has already said, um, from what we have read, mm -hmm. uh, Jesus was coming from Galilee to Judea, and a lot of people 
followed him to where he was going. And when they got there, he healed them all from their sicknesses. And after that, when the Pharisees came in, they asked Jesus a question. But they asked him because they wanted to test him. Mm. So they asked, is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife for any reason? Mm. And Jesus answered them that, have you not read that in the beginning God made male and female? Mm. And uh, he made them that when they join together, they become one flesh. The two become one. And what God has joined together, not any man mm. should separate it. Mm -hmm. That's good. I think you remembered more than I did. <laughs> so go around and, and have everybody try to say it without looking. Because then they'll, they'll say, oh yeah, I forgot about this part. But then they'll always remember that part, even though they, they don't remember everything. Mm -hmm. So it's okay if you miss something. Yes. Just um, let everybody try to recite it. Mm -hmm. And it becomes a good challenge for you. Not a bad one. Yes. Okay. So now let's, let's try to write down in the second column here. Put down, what is God saying? And then, what did you learn? So there's always something that is the focus of the passage mm -hmm. that God is trying to help you understand. Mm -hmm. So in this part, the second column, what is God saying? And what did you learn? So just take a moment to write it down in this second column. And, and then we can take time to discuss it after we wrote down something. Because there's lots of things you can discuss on this passage. And, but you want to focus on what, what God is teaching you. What, is, what are you learning from this? So let's write something down right now.
I just wrote down some things in the second column that I was learning and what God is saying here. You ready? Yes. Okay. So what is God saying in this passage? There's quite a few things that he's saying here. Um, but the main part of this is about divorce. Yes. And so when we focus on this passage, we want to realize that marriage is for life. And we don't want to um, promote something else here that says, oh, it's okay if you get divorced because um, the Bible says this and this and this. What we're really trying to say is that from this passage here is that marriage is for life. So let's, let's look at this. And some of the things that we're learning here is that it looks to me that when God brings two people together, they become one flesh. And because they're one flesh, when the Pharisees asked this question, Jesus was realizing they're trying to break apart this one flesh. And so... He looks at it in a different way. He doesn't say, oh, you know, it's okay if you get a divorce, but it has to be for this reason. He says, you know what? From the beginning, you were made this way, and you're supposed to cling to your wife. You're supposed to be together. You're not supposed to be thinking of ways to get a divorce so it's like I was thinking about this and I was starting to learn oh you mean there's something bigger here and one of the one of the parts that I started realizing was that um, it's God who has joined the two of you together so if God has joined the two of you together and this passage says, let no man separate that. Mm -hmm. So even in your own mind, mm -hmm. you can be thinking, how can I separate this? Mm -hmm. Not just somebody else. Mm -hmm. And so you may be in a situation where you're saying, oh, my wife, you know, I don't love her anymore. And she's, she's no good. So... I'm trying to think of ways that I can have a divorce. Maybe if she does this, then that will give me an excuse to get a divorce. Or maybe I can make her do this, or I can make something happen and then we can get a divorce. But see, you're trying to take apart what God has joined together. So the whole thing is, is like, the wrong way that you should be looking at this question. 
And that's the way the Pharisees were trying to trap him here. And so I was learning that it's God who has joined us together. It's not just that two people said, I do, and they join themselves together. It's that God joined them together. How about you? Uh, from the scripture that we have read, I have learned that um, God is telling us that there is always something mm. in our life or someone in our life or even our own thoughts that speak to us. It's either from someone mm -hmm. like the Pharisees who came and asked Jesus to test. In our life also can be someone coming to ask us or to speak something, maybe unknowingly or knowingly, but putting us to test mm -hmm. or our thoughts testing us. And these things that come to us, whether people are coming to say something to us or our own thoughts are testing us, Jesus answered to the Pharisees who brought a question to test him, saying, have you not read? Mm. So even in our life, mm -hmm. when there's something or someone or our own thoughts are testing us, we need to go back to see what God said in the beginning, like the way he said about the divorce thing. Mm. Because he said, mm -hmm. have you not read that in the beginning? So everything that comes and challenges us with our thoughts or someone is speaking something maybe they are speaking to us unknowing mm -hmm. or knowing mm -hmm. but we need to go back and see what god said mm -hmm. in the beginning i'll give an example maybe of a, our own children maybe the way we want them to do things sometimes it's like the things are testing us mm -hmm. And when we look at what is happening and what we want them to do, it is very different. But it is time that we go back to see what mm -hmm. the Lord says in his words. Because there's a verse which says, I will teach all your children. Mm. So when we go back to what the Lord said in the beginning, he told us he will teach all our children. Yeah. Interesting. So, do you think that Jesus answered this question fully to them? I know we can um, we could continue on in the the rest of the verses, but let's just try to remember here that. The, the reason that you want to get a divorce is, is not the reason that you should be trying to come apart. You should be trying to stay together. So when you're getting thoughts in your mind, mm -hmm. like Joanne was saying, that want to tear apart your your marriage then you should be focusing on actually the opposite actually bringing your marriage together back again and that's what i believe jesus was saying here he's not trying to give a, a reason that says well if you commit adultery then it's okay to get a divorce. What he's trying to say is, look at your thoughts mm -hmm. and try to bring them in line mm -hmm. with getting your marriage back together again instead of separating. Mm -hmm. And that's what I think a lot of people try to do. They think that a marriage is like going to a, a restaurant, a fast food restaurant, and you think, well, 
I want to order this and this and this and this. But sometimes everything doesn't always work out the way you want it to be. And so you think, oh, I'll just get another wife. Well, that's, that's not the plan here. The plan is that the two of you are joined together by God and you're joined together for life so that the two are one flesh. And so instead of coming at it from thinking in your thoughts that it's okay to break apart this marriage, let's focus on what Jesus' point was here. He was saying that God brought you together, so let's work on that. And right now in, in your lives, you may be married or unmarried, um, separated. I don't know where you're at in your life. But God is asking you to do something right now. And that's why we have the third column. So in this one, put I will and then how you're going to obey God right now. And see, that's what makes this kind of Bible study so important mm. because you can be reading a scripture mm. and you can say, that's wonderful. Mm. I'm so excited about this. God has such pleasant words. And then you go away, just like you were looking in the mirror and you say, okay, my face looks okay. My hair looks okay. Everything looks okay. Now I'm just going to go away. And but you don't really do anything with God's word. You just walk away. And sadly, that's what we, we tend to do every time we get into God's word. Whether we're at church or we're with some friends or we're just reading some daily passages about God's word. We just say, that looks good. Okay, now I'm on my way and we don't do anything. Mm -hmm. So take a moment to write down what God is asking you to do. And if it's too personal to share, that's okay. We understand. Mm -hmm. But you can, you can say to your friends, mm -hmm. pray, for, pray for me. Pray for my marriage. Pray for, pray for us. So take a moment to write down something that you're going to do.
How are we doing? Are you ready? Yeah. I'm ready. Okay. So for me, um, I wrote in the column right here several things. Um, when I get thoughts about um, wanting to marry someone else, what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on spending more quality time with my wife. So I was thinking about what I could do. And you know, back when I was dating my wife, I would always be thinking of, okay, what can we, what kind of a date can we go on this next week? Um, because if you don't get to spend time with that person, things aren't progressing, right? So, I would always be thinking about that and planning. So I was thinking, yeah, I need to be focusing on what I can do to have a, a date this, this week with my wife and then make it like a habit for the rest of uh, the year. So what I'm going to try to do is focus more on having a date with my wife this week and I'm not going to let my thoughts think about marrying somebody else. So that way I don't have to try to think of an excuse for divorcing my wife, but let's think about how we can make our relationship even better. So that's what God is asking me to do this week. Okay, how about you? <laughs> oh, my, I will call on. I have written that down. The thoughts, they need to be checked with the, what the Lord said or planned in the beginning because mm. it is the source of everything that happens afterwards. The source is the thought. So I've written that um, each and every time I need to check my thoughts to be in line with what God planned in the beginning. Mm -hmm. So that whatever comes afterwards, after the thoughts, the actions will be in line with what God planned in the beginning. Because what God planned in the beginning will always give us peace, the joy that we are looking, always looking for, but we already are given the joy. It is just now applying what the Lord already planned in the beginning. Mm -hmm. And we need to take that and put it in action. So I've written that I, I need to, to understand and to apply what the Lord already planned in the beginning in each and every day-to-day activity or everyday life that's what I've written mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. great job okay and also be thinking about somebody that this passage you can share with because as you pray for somebody that you are going to help disciple think about um, somebody that God brings to your mind mm -hmm maybe that this passage would really help them out with. And if they're open to discussing it with you, then maybe you can start even uh, some discipleship making with them and share with them the passage just as we have learned today, just like this. And then each week when you come back, you can, share, you can share with each other the I will statement. How did it go this week? How was everything? Were you able to make a date with your wife? Were you able to keep your, your thoughts in line with the way that it has been from the beginning and to apply it to your life? And so that's what we're going to do this week. And... This is powerful because so many marriages are breaking up 
and maybe you're already a part of a relationship that is broken up, but you can see why um, looking at the pain and the suffering that you've been through, why you would want to try to keep this, this marriage together. If both of you can work together, or even just one of you can try to keep the positive togetherness going, then maybe the other one can also be drawn together. I know with, with my wife, if I start planning a date, she's probably going to get excited about that. And if I can even let her know in advance, you know, let's think about this Friday or this Saturday, she's going to be even more excited about it. So let's, let's try to work on that with what this, this passage is saying. That's what I'm going to try to do. And God may be asking you to do something similar or even more difficult if that's your situation and let's just close in prayer right now and ask God to help us right now Lord Jesus we just thank you for what we've understood that your Holy Spirit is telling us from this passage about marriage and Lord we know that you want us to not think about ways to get a divorce, but ways to keep our marriage together. And so that's the way it's been from the beginning. And we don't want to try to separate what you have joined. Lord, help us. Help us to be the people you want us to be. And make it exciting for our, our spouses our husband, our wife. And Lord, help us to be the kind of people you want us to be so that we can, we can share the good news to everyone and that our family will be together and not broken. And Lord, if it's already broken or there's some turmoil in our marriage, we ask that you would help us to remember what the plan was from the beginning and then to apply this to our lives now so that we can try to make sure that we're following your word in the ways that you have planned for us so that we don't have to experience so much pain and heartache and especially if if our children are watching us and they're seeing the example that we're giving to our children. Help us to be a good example for them. Amen. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, so may you have a wonderful week. And if you can make a comment and what your I will statement will be this week, I would love to hear what God is going to do in your life this week yes. for any of you who are around the world you can just make a comment from the youtube video and we'll pray for you mm -hmm. we'll pray for all of uh, our brothers and sisters around the world yes. that this week god will help you as he has spoken to you mm -hmm. to do something very specific yes. in your life and maybe in somebody else's life so let's give that to God right now and just trust him and we'll be praying for you. Yes. We love you all very much. Goodbye. <laughs>